Here in section 5.3, we are looking at linear programming. And linear programming uh, can be approached in a couple different ways. And in section 5.3, we're doing the geometric approach, which is very visual. We're going to be looking at lines, which is how we get the word linear. And we're looking at inequalities in our feasible region. And our goal here is to either maximize or minimize what we call an objective function. So let's say that our objective might be to maximize profit. Well, if we want to maximize profit, there are certain limitations, which we're going to call constraints. We may not be able to make and sell a million bicycles. That might maximize our profit. However, it may not be feasible. So we're looking for certain constraints, certain requirements that must be satisfied. And we want to see which of those options is actually going to maximize or minimize the objective. When we talk about the objective function and the constraints, this, is, this forms what we call a mathematical model. So we're going to be making some decisions about what is the best, the best solution. So this brings us to what we call the corner point theorem. So the corner point theorem says that if we want to maximize or minimize an objective function, we are going to be looking at the corner points. So it will, if a, maxima, if a maximum or a minimum occurs, then it will occur at one or more of the corner points. So we're going to be looking at the feasible region, and we're going to look at the corner points of that feasible region. Now this says that if the feasible region is bounded, then I know that I have both a maximum and a minimum value. Now I may not be interested in both of them, but they will both exist. Um, if the feasible region is unbounded, we're going to be looking at our corner points again, but we may or may not have a maximum or a minimum value. If a maximum or minimum value occurs, well, like, just like before, it will occur at one or more of the corner points. For our purposes, um, let's say this, a minimum will exist. But a maximum will not. So if our region is unbounded, so we're going to kind of put a square around that word there, then for our purposes, a minimum value will exist, but a maximum value will not. So our general process here, and we're going to reserve a few of these steps for word problems. But step one and step two, if we have to, we will form a mathematical model on our own. Um, and this will come into play when we look at some word problems. Okay, If we are already presented with a mathematical model, then we want to graph the feasible region that's represented and we're going to determine all the corner points. Then we're going to evaluate the objective function at each corner point. We want to know which one of those gives us the maximum or minimum value of the objective function. Okay, and this once again is part of our word problem. We're going to interpret our solution. So let's look at our first example. So here uh, we are asked to solve the linear programming problem of the given mathematical model. So here we're asked to, uh, to maximize and minimize the function p equals 3x plus y. This is our objective. And this is what we would call the objective function. So we can kind of consider p kind of like maybe like profit. So our profit is determined by the following formula, 3x plus y. Let's say for whatever reason I would like to determine what is the maximum and minimum value of p. So what's the highest that P can be, and what's the, well, basically what's the highest and lowest values that P can take on? But we are subjected to certain constraints. So these are what we would call our constraints. We're limited in what we can actually have for values of X and for Y. If X could be infinity and Y could be infinity, um, then of course the profit would be infinity. But x and y may not can be infinity. Let's look at what are the restrictions for what x and y can be. So we're going to graph these linear inequalities. So 2x plus y 
less than or equal to 20. Um, for each one of these, we're going to find the x-intercept, and we're going to find the y-intercept, and then we're going to pick a test value. And the test value that we're going to be choosing, um, as f if we can, is 0, 0. So we're going to pick some test values here, or plot our x and y-intercepts, actually. Um, to find an x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. To find a y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. And I'm going to do one line at a time here. So I'm going to graph line A. We'll call this one B. We'll call this one C. And let's go ahead and use let's go ahead and use different colors just because we can. So we'll call this line B will be purple. And uh, let's call line C red. Okay. Now remember that the last two inequalities are pretty easy. They tell us that the variables have to be positive, which limits us to quadrant one. So we won't worry about those um, too much. Now for the first one, we're looking for the y or for the x-intercept. So we're going to set y equal to zero, which means this term drops out, and we have two x equals twenty, which means that x will be equal to ten. All right. And then for the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to zero. So that means this term drops out, and we're left with y equals twenty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop there for a second. I'm going to graph these two points, um, 10, 0, and 0, 20. So I'm going to plot those two points. And I'm going to write that that comes from line A. And 0, 20 is here. I'm going to write next to that 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 also comes from line A. And I'm going to draw a line connecting them and try to draw as straight of a line as we can. Okay. Now I want to know which side of this line that I want to shade. So our test value lived right here, 0, 0. And this is below and to the left of that line. So we're going to choose 0, 0. I'm going to plug it in in place of x and in place of y. And I get 0 is less than or equal to 20, which is true. So I'm going to shade to the left or below. I'm going to shade towards the test point. So I'm going to shade to the left and below the side that contains that test point. All right, for line B, I'm going to set y equal to 0. So we get 36 divided by 10. I'm going to write that as 3.6. All right, and then for the next one, I'm going to set x equal to 0, and I get y equals 36. Now that's from line B. Once again, I'm going to plot those two points, and I'm going to label them. So 3.6 is approximately right here, closer to the 4. So I'm just going to put um, 3.6 comma 0. I'm going to put that comes from line B. And then we have a point way up here, 0 comma 36. I'm going to label that. And I'm also going to put that that comes from line B. Make this a little bit smaller so you can kind of see both points at the same time. I'm going to draw. Try to draw a straight line connecting those two points. All right, now I want to know which side of that line that I want to shade. So let's go back to look at our original inequality. We're going to put a 0 in place of x and for y, and that gives us that 0 is greater than or equal to 36. And that's false, so that tells me I'm going to shade to the right or opposite of where the origin is. So we're going to shade to the right. And I'm shading here in purple. All right, and then line C, I'm going to set y equal to 0, and I get 2x equals 36, which means x would be 18. And this next one I'm going to set uh, x equal to 0, which gives me 36 divided by 5, which I believe is 7.2. And that's an exact value, so I'm just going to write it as 7.2. 
All right, so we're going to plot those two points as well. Uh, see, 18 comma 0 is here. I'm going to label the point and put a C by it that comes from line C. And um, 0 comma 7.2, approximately between 0 or 6 and 8 there. <coughs> So I'm going to put that point on as labeled as well. I'm going to try to draw as straight a line as possible here by connecting the two points. And then I want to know where do I need to shade. So we're going to use the test point 0, 0 again. We're using that origin. And that gives me 0 is greater than or equal to 36, which is false, which means I need to shade the side that's opposite of our test point. So I'm going to shade everything above this line. So everything above line C. Now remember what we're looking for here is we are looking for the region where it's both purple, blue, and red all at the same time. So we're looking for all three colors at the same time. And so that region looks like it's the region to the right of line B, below line A, and above line C. So that looks like our feasible region right there. So that is a bounded feasible region. So these are the solutions that are feasible. So what we would like to know now are, is what are the corner points of this feasible region? So let's look for the corner points. So the corner points would be the points that are at the intersection of line A and B, which is here, um, the intersection of line B and C, which is here, and the point that lies at the intersection of lines A and C. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what those points are, just for sake of simplicity here. It's 2, 16, 8, 4, and this point right here is 3, 6. So I'm going to go ahead and write them out for us here. And in the next video, I will show you where those points come from. So I'll do the calculation. So if you wanted to stop the video now and watch the second video for how you find those corner points, you could do that. I'm just going to go ahead and say these are our corner points. And we're going to write down the objective function. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little table here, listing out all of our corner points and our objective function. So the objective function that we want to um, maximize and minimize was p equals 3x plus y. So we want to know what are the maximum and minimum values of this function. So let's plug the values for x and y, where all of these ordered pairs represent x and y values. Let's plug in the x and y values into the objective function. So that's 3 times 2 plus the y value of 16. So what do we get for p? So we plug that into our calculator and I get uh, 22. All right, so the next ordered pair is going to give me 3 times 8 plus 4. So I get 24 plus 4, that's 28. And the last quarter point. 3 times 3 plus 6, I end up with 9 plus 6, which is 15. So remember that we said that when there's a bounded feasible region, that we will be able to obtain a maximum and a minimum value for our objective function. So the minimum value is 15, and the maximum value is 28. So we're going to answer our question here that the maximum value of p is 28 when x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 4. Okay, and then the other solution, the minimum value of p is 15. And that occurs when x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 6. Okay, so there it would be our solution.